question has been asked, where is the fire? That is the question. Yesterday, the pastor heaped a, a, a coal of fire on our heads where he asked, what is between you and Jesus? What is it that is stopping you from ministering and doing what you're actually called for, given the power that you have? And right now, Pastor Dr. Ratsara, it's your time to continue with the lessons that I know we're going to really uh, glean on. And more than anything, we are going to be doers of your word. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. I would like to greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is always a joy to be part of this uh, praying group. It is an amazing that we have group of people willing to wake up very early and uh, seeking the face of God. And you know what? When you do that, we'll never be disappointed because God has been waiting for us. So God is here. So today we are going to continue our study on, on this. And okay, where is the fire? Where is the fire? That is the question. And yesterday we talked about in the judgment wall. I'm just going to summarize a little bit what we have studied. You know, in Luke chapter 22, verse 55, we said, now when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. So we have studied yesterday that Peter, Peter tried to hide among the group. He wanted not to be identified. And that was his problem. He was not willing to be known as a follower of Christ. And then in this verse as well, it is said that there was a fire and the fire was outside of Peter, not inside of him. And that's why he was weak. The fire of the Holy Spirit was just outside of Peter. And that was his problem. So where is the fire? The fire was outside of Peter. And in Matthew chapter 26, verse 69 to 74, uh, you, we can see he was in the judgment hall there. This is the summary of his problem. Peter hid himself. He sought glory for himself. He was arrogant, trusted in his own judgment, his own strength. And he was overconfident. And as a result, he denied Jesus three times. Not once, not twice, three times. He denied Jesus Christ. And from that, it was really the low point of, of Peter. But the good news, my brothers and my sisters, this story did not end there. Thank God. The story continued. And that should be our story, my story and your story. The life of Peter going up with abundant fire. The first step up is to experience the love of Christ. In the same place in the judgment hall, something happened. And here in Luke chapter 22 and verse 61, I read, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows, he will deny me three times. Remember here, I want us to notice, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. The look of Jesus Christ, the eyes of Jesus Christ. What is the meaning of that? In this uh, great book, The Desire of Ages, page 712, 713, written by Len G. White, I just gleaned some, and uh, it gives us insight. While the degrading oaths were fresh in Peter's lips, and the shrill crowing of the cock was still ringing in his ears. 
the Savior turned from the frowning judges and looked full upon his poor disciples. You see here that Peter was denying Jesus Christ and he was doing those uh, things really very sad that he went so low. But Jesus Christ, he heard, I'm sure you heard that, and he looked at Peter and their eyes met. And at the same time, Peter's eyes were drawn to his master. And in that gentle countenance, you read deep pity and sorrow, but there was no anger there. So when the true, the eyes of the true met, the eyes of the master met the eyes of the one who denied him. Then Jesus Christ looked at him, not angry, but with gentle countenance, deep pity and sorrow. There's no anger there. And that touched Peter. The sight of that pale, suffering face, those quivering lips, that look of compassion and forgiveness pierced his heart like a narrow conscience was aroused. And memory was active. Peter called to mind his promise of a few short hours before that he would go with his Lord to prison and to death. You remember all of that. And remembered his grief when the Savior told him the upper chamber that he would deny his Lord thrice that same night. And the tide of memories rushed over him. The Savior tender mercy, his kindness and long suffering, his gentleness and patience toward his hearing disciples, all was remembered. So what happened here? What happened here is the love of Jesus Christ touched him. The love of Jesus Christ touched him. His mercies touched him. So he was there, right there, denied. He was denying Christ. And instead of Jesus Christ, den kind of blamed him for being angry, Jesus chose to show his love and his mercies. And for Peter, that really moved him to the core. And that is the first step up. For us to be filled with the Holy Spirit, for the fire, for fire to fill us, the fire of the Holy Spirit, the first step up is to feel or to experience the love of Jesus. My dear friends, sometimes we take the love of Jesus for granted. Come with me tonight in your imagination, in a classroom where small children in a church school, um, one of the subjects is the Bible, Bible knowledge. And the teacher started to teach about the cross. And the teacher explained to the little ones, they were like six, seven years old, they were listening to the cross. So the teacher said, you know, children, Jesus Christ died on the cross. He, uh, he suffered and uh, he finally he was killed. And then one, one little boy, one little boy raised his hand. Miss, I would like to say something. And he said, what? And he said, Miss, you, you are lying. You are not telling the truth. You lie. And the teacher wanted to be mad, annoyed by that. He said, oh, lack of respect. But when he looked at the little boy, he said, no, this is not a naughty boy. Actually, he is a kind boy, very mature for his age. So he decided, um, she decided, she decided not to be mad, but instead 
instead trying to understand. He said, oh, look, uh, she said, why are you telling me that I'm telling a lie? Oh, miss, you see, you are telling us about Jesus Christ crucified and he died and he suffered a lot, but your face does not show it. So it's not true. You, you are not even sad when you talk about that. So it is not true. Hmm. The teacher reflected a lot on that. And he realized that the little boy is right. Many times, my dear friends, we take the love of Jesus for granted. And we don't experience his love. And that's why our hearts sometimes are hardened because we are not melted by the love of Jesus. So for Peter, that really touched his heart. That moved him to the core that Jesus Christ, even though he denied him, he still looked at him with love. So tonight, I would like us just to experience the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus. We need to spend time to just to meditate upon what Christ has done for us. Can you imagine, just imagine that you are there and Jesus Christ is crucified and you are, and then you realize that he is crucified, not because of his sins, not because of his faults, but because of you and because of me. So my dear friends, if we do that, our lives will be different. Love is so powerful. Love is so powerful. Let me tell you another story. This time, it happened in the United States. And that was a time of slavery, which was very terrible. Can you even imagine human beings uh, sells another human beings? But it happened. It happened. So that was the time. There was a day that it was dedicated in the market where slaves were sold. So the slaves were there lined up. And the takers, they came, those potential buyers came and they started to experience, to, uh, to kind of check, check the slaves. Oh, I would like to this one. How much is this one? So bad. How much is this one? And then they started to, to take and finally um, some slaves were already sold. And there was a, a slave, a young man, strong, tall, young. And the rich people, because uh, his cost was, his price was quite high. The rich people uh, asked, how much is this one? And he started to inspect, inspect him. And then his name is Joseph. And then Joseph talked to the potential buyer. He said, um, do you want to buy me? Oh, yes, I'm really interested. I would like to buy you. And then Joseph would say, look, you are going to waste your money because even if you are going to kill me, I'm not going to work. Oh, this potential buyer said, no, from day one, there's already a problem. I'm not going to buy, even though this one is strong. And then another one came to, oh, the same speech from Joseph. Do you want to buy me? Yes, yes. Well, even if you kill me, I will not work. I will not work. I mean it. And then finally, Joseph was almost alone there. All the slaves were sold except him. And finally, it was already in the afternoon, late in the afternoon. An old man came. 
And he said, I'm going to buy this one. And uh, he started to inspect just for, formally, not just, just formality, because he wanted to buy. So uh, Joseph started his speech. Oh, you want to buy me? Oh, yes. The old man said, I would like to do that. He said, well, I'm telling you, telling you, you are going to waste your money because I am not going to work. But the old man just kind of ignored that. He started to just to negotiate the price. Just finally, finally, they agreed on the price with the owner. And then he, he brought Joseph with him. And Joseph was just protesting and saying, no, I, I'm not going to work. You are just wasting, old man, you're just wasting your money and you are wasting your time. So the old man did not really take notice of that. He continued to go. And then when they finished some distance from the city, they stopped and the old man looked at Joseph. And, and he said, you know, Joseph, I bought you. You think that I, I bought you for you to become a slave. I say, he said, no, I'm against slavery. I am an abolitionist. Actually, I'm fighting against that. I use my money to buy slaves so that they can be free. So I've bought you, Joseph. Now you are free. And Joseph looked at him, is that true? He said, sure. And he, the old man started to release him. And he knew that it was true. And then this strong young man started to cry like a little boy. And between tears, he said, since you have bought me not to be a slave, but to be free, I will work. I'm not going to go. I will be with you. I will never leave you. Ask me whatever you want me to do, I will do. Because this love, I cannot understand. My dear friends, 2000 years ago, someone died and shed his blood to buy us from slavery of sin. What you need to do now is to say yes to that love and experience that love and we will be changed. May the Lord be with us as you experience the love of God that will change us completely. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for your love, for your kindness. You have shown that love to Peter. And we know that you have shown that also to us. Help us, Lord, to respond positively and allow ourselves to be changed by that love. In the name of Jesus. Amen.